So last episode, we showed you what we had machined in the chamber and all work that we did. And now, of course, we got to assemble the head, the valve spring and retainers. And you know us, we'll show you what we've never shown before. We're going to assemble the head with you guys. All, all the details like this. Oh, you're going to love this one. And yes, we're going to drop in the head onto the block, into the car and get it all done. And so will it start? Will it? Hmm. We'll see. You got to stick around and find out. We could have a quick talk about ECU tuning and all the stuff that we do because people were curious because we were running a 13.2 is to 1 ultra high compression on the DCZ A6 on pump gas. <laughs> First things first, our new page is up and running. We had to make a new one due to inactivity on the other one because of the account. And now here you can see there's a local, for the local peeps, there's a price list there. Even for the international ones, it's the same. We just exchange rate with the currency. And you can see our posts there. We post a lot of good technical stuff that sometimes does not make the video, but we just gotta post it there because, hey, we always share, right? So, you guys should like and follow the page because it's going to help continue certain discussions from here to there and from there to here. So hopefully most of the, our subscribers here can like and follow the page. That's going to mean a lot to me, guys. Thank you. And so now let's continue, shall we? So here's the head all cleaned up and ready to be fully assembled. We checked everything that we can. And so now it's really ready. Yes, sir. It's all clean and look at those exhausts. So now we drop in the valves and then assemble the valve spring, the Bisimoto valve springs, all right? This deserves a bit of attention. The Torque assembly loop, we like using the Torque assembly loop, but any brand works. Like I know Liquid Moly has an assembly loop and also we also have a Joe Gibbs Racing one. So we got to loop the stem because the, the stems are dry especially during startup so that's a big deal so we make sure it's lubricated well this way during startup and even the first few phases of the cycle it's well lubed it's all good some use grease for the stems and that is fine as long as it's lub pre-lubricated before startup it'll be good so now we go with a time lapse this way it's quicker as you can see the head we cleaned it up with solvent mineral spirits first of course and so the die cam is still there it's slightly visible we didn't resurface this because it already has been resurfaced one millimeter before so that's why it was 13.2 now it's 13 is to 1 or 12.95 or 98 is to 1 so almost 13 it's still good we don't need to resurface one more even more i mean all right there you go okay now let's invert the head and put the valve spring compressor fixture on but first we lift the head this way we can close up the exhaust valves all the way and put back the lubrication the lubricant i mean and look at that Yes, sir. Stock valves, just stock valves here, but cleaned up chambers. All right, here's what we do. Before we invert it, we put masking tape on the chambers. This way the valves won't fall off, okay? Now, here, we put the fixture on top of the, where the cam caps bolt, actually, yep. We align it, make sure we look at it with the, with the valve spring in height considered. Okay, now we yeah, move it. All right, there you go. Let's go. You know, we gotta pay homage to my friend Bisimoto or BC. So I still have his old sticker with the Orbital Beta logo. It's still one of my favorite logos. Yes, sir. Okay. And if you're liking this video and if you haven't, subscribe and hit the bell notification because that will really help. Because whenever we have a new upload, you'll be notified and watch it. It's gonna be good. And also, of course, hit the like button because it'll help generate more activity. And that means the algorithm will pick it up and 
fans to a wider audience. That's gonna be really awesome, guys. And of course, something new from YouTube, you can hit up a super thanks to us if you really like this video and even the other videos. So hey, super thanks. Any amount will be really, really cool because everyone knows we always try to improve our content every time we put it out. Okay, the fun part now, the Bisimodo High RPM Springs and OEM Steel Retainers. Yes, sir. All right. I asked BC why he doesn't run titanium retainers. He says you could, it's just a little bit more expensive and it doesn't really break because the diameter is small unlike the dock or the B, the B series, which makes sense, you know. Okay, here, show you without time lapse, just to show you the, you know, it, the time lapse might show it's too easy. Well, yeah, it's it kind of is because it's not that easy, but it's not super difficult. There see okay now we go a time lapse the rest yeah all right let's move the the stopper for the valves in the chamber from opening when you compress the springs so we have to put that there to avoid it from opening all right time lapse now it's gonna be all good you see and I actually use a, a, a needle sized wire to help when the keepers or the valve locks move around when you compress it, you kind of need that pointy thing to help you nudge it back to place. So as you can see, I don't use it all the time, but sometimes when you need to move it, you got you got to do it, right? So see, there. Okay, now invert it onto the exhaust now. As you can see here, we, you would notice we sometimes use the needle wire just to help us move the keepers there you saw that it's just to you know because if you don't it might just it might pop off and you might actually lose a keeper that's gonna be harder right yes, sir okay before we install the head because we're all about full disclosure here because the head we just cleaned it up the deck with solvent and even the block so it wasn't refer resurfaced right so we decided to use copper spray just to be sure and this time we also decided to like reuse the head gasket to, because there was no problem with it prior but if you had issues with the gasket before you have to get a new one and again we don't really advise this because you know we make sure everything is good when we're building engines for customers but this is mine so i'm willing to risk it and try all this stuff but as you guys see when we build engines from the engine stand and it's fully resurfaced we do it properly and of course because this is mine and we're gonna do a lot of r d with this we'll probably pull the head more than once this is something that's okay to do or give it a shot for my own engine so let's install this now so let's get it ready so we take this head lift it up check the deck okay remove the stopper there all right we tap this i, I was taught i was told to check this like this way way back it's an old school way you just tap the valves from the retainer from the lash side just to see everything is good not, not nothing is lodged up so this way it's all good right so you can literally hear here the valve open a bit right whenever you tap it okay so now let's remove the tape so that we're ready to install it yes sir there you go as you can see the deck is not really resurfaced right it's well it's been re resurfaced before when it was running so we're just going to install this as is okay now let's head on to the car oh yeah something funny worth mentioning sometime like five years ago a hater used to say or used to tell everyone that in srd all the work is done by just my colleague and i don't do anything well i've used i'm sure you've seen all the videos and apparently i do the final assembly right and to tell you the truth, my colleague can build an engine just as good as I can. So what we do is what LeBron James does, load management. He does the prepping, I do the final assembly. This way, there's less stress for both of us. So to the hater, I'm not that shop that you, you think you know. I'm not like the self-proclaimed builder, but has his worker do all the work, but claims that he's a builder, you know. But hey, last time I checked, you're rolling with them. So it must be fun. Okay, we head to the car. As you can see, the gasket is already there waiting. 
yes sir we time lapse this 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 way it just gets done and you guys enjoy the view and you can see we're running now a stock po8 intake because we're gonna dyno this with this manifold and then the ported one and then finally my skunk too so it's gonna be fun this is the start of all the fun guys yes sir and now here you go the head is fully torqued up yes sir now we gotta put the cam the valve train and then the rest yes sir yes sir and here i want to let me show you something proof that my esi used to be an automatic here look we didn't really use get a tinsmith to change the support or the, the bracket we just got the conversion mount this way it's just all bolt on right yes sir now it's a manual ready to rumble yes sir okay now let's continue okay next up is drop in the cams yes sir yes sir then the valve tray now it's all ready yes sir get the belt on with the cam gear first and then of course we're gonna start completing all the small bits and pieces and then it's gonna be good you look at that without the cam gear of course yet as you can see the beautiful exhaust ports oh yeah this is gonna be running really good and the stock po8 intake manifold as you can see proof that it's stock and not welded right yes sir so now we're just gonna complete all the small bits and pieces so that we can put the valve cover on the distributor so probably start it up so let's see get it to idle good and somehow get the mechanical timing good oh yeah almost forgot here's the injectors that we're gonna use we actually use from now on it's a 320 or 310 cc injector but the main thing here the reason why i'm using this is look if you can see it it has like 8 to 12 nozzles instead of just one tip so this spray is definitely way better than the stock ones or the ray our old school injectors from the 90s so atomization here will be better so hey more power right we could also use an rdx 410 cc jasper actually uses that and you can see how it performs on his car in his b20 vtec yeah okay so now let's start this thing sorry about the flash i didn't realize it was on until after all right okay it's not running so we're gonna check a bit of other stuff because but you can actually hear it it's almost trying to run so it's right there right there we know okay one more try okay oh come on it's almost there okay that's odd so now we're gonna do some checkups here and all that as i always told you guys full disclosure we always show you everything so now it won't start we won't always show you the good stuff only in times like this we're gonna share this so now let's go to a workbench while my colleague checks because it won't start i gotta try to make it up to you guys so let's look at the tuning side of things here wait the lighting is all weird with the laptop on okay wait let me see you can barely see it right okay wait up let me get my gimbal wait up wait up okay here we are now wait let's tilt this though no, so so that it's straight a bit more wait there you go all right so now this is my tune the tuner of my car of my engine and of course here's the full throttle area that's the peak timing is on the peak power area we haven't dyno this but i know it peaks around seven or seven two so peak timing is right there i i did the base map before running the engine and this is what i did because no because i know the compression was too high so this area is really important you have to take care of that or make the timing curve real proper and real good of course i'm not gonna, it's hard for me to share all the details because i'm actually planning to make a video a tuning video that's going to be for membership only anyways now here's on the tuning suite i have not used this yet but i'm actually transferring the data or the tune or the tune values to from chrome to honda tuning suite and here it is it's actually getting closer to my tune here right and sure it looks quite different but look let's put this side by side yes sir so it's getting close it's getting right there so i'm going to run on the, on the tuning suite after or with you guys so hey we're going to show you guys okay now let's look at the base map here let's start with the d16 z6 so let's talk about the ignition maps 
it's very important okay here let's go to the low cam okay and look at let's go to the graph all right yes here as you can see because the d16 is a tough little engine or the little block it's okay to have an aggressive timing or the you know the progress and here's the full throttle of course on low cam before vtec let's look at the graph it's right there there's a full throttle area and then the thing that you gotta check here that's worth noting is in this area here this is where we mostly are when we're driving around high vacuum low throttle with with a good loader minimal to medium load and that's where you always ping or tope in tagalog you know pre-ignition and now let's look at the b16 everyone's favorite yeah number one all right here low cam and look here even the timing of the b16 the jdm b16 is quite aggressive right especially on this area here let me highlight it for a moment wait here this part look at it it's still quite high right that's when people say our tuners say the timing is aggressive well tuners who knows their stuff okay here and then if you go lower on that that's where you always get the pinging or top it when you're running high compression and when you look at it the curve the curve is too aggressive right okay now let's go wait sorry 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 let's go to the b18c here we are okay same place low cam look even way more aggressive that's crazy right and it works good for that engine so that's no problem the problem here now is if you use this base map or a b16 base map to tune a b20 or you'll be cracking bores left and right especially you know if it's aggressive and built with high compression so this part here has cannot be overlooked so i know the b20 always gets the blame for having weaker block yeah sure it is weaker but if you remember this car this has been running since 2018 with 13.7 is to one compression on the streets no problem here's my old tune and also this one here jasper's b20 vtec ef it's been racing since 2017 no trailer driven to the track 100 kilometers raced for two days and then driven back home for 100 kilometers no problem and that's a b20 it doesn't it hasn't cracked in like what more than half a decade it's been running 12 fives too so hey something to think about and i know find the right beat will be stoked about this part of the video and also my buddy zef from Elegant city because we always talk about this so he can relate to the tuner because his tuner is his good friend so hey for me it's just puff puff pass when it comes to information like this and notice i didn't talk about the fueling because everyone especially locally when they think they can tune just because they're tuning via wideband like buy a wideband get the laptop and suddenly now they're a tuner ignition is a bigger actually a huge part of tuning so hey so wait up until we get to make the tuning video on the membership only section for now you can just click here for more